Hi everyone, I uh, just wanted to make a quick video showing you something that I found in Xcode that lets you actually try out the uh, NS Touch Bar or the, the Touch Bar um, on any sort of Mac that you want to try out. Um, so the Apple announced this yesterday that was all about uh, a new Touch Bar that's going to replace the function keys, the F1 through F12. We use those for a bunch of different things, but let me just dive right in. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my uh, taskbar or my dock over to the right because I want to pop my uh, touch bar down the bottom here. Let's put it off to the left, sorry. Um, and then what you need to do is just go to the App Store and you need Xcode to do this. So if you're not a developer, it doesn't matter. I think you can still download Xcode. So just go ahead and open that, or download, open it, and you're good to go. Um, the next thing that you want to do is uh, just go to Safari and just search for NS Touch Bar. That's the API that uh, the Touch Bar uses. Uh, so you can go to this website, and there's this NS Touch Bar catalog. Just go ahead and click that. And if you're not a developer, again, that's fine. Just ignore all this stuff. You want to download the sample code. And let's go to my downloads folder downloads okay so we've got this MNS touch bar uh, just go to that you've got an Objective-C in Swift I'm gonna open the Swift one and just double click on this Xcode project and that will open that up now there were actually two different versions of Sierra so um, there was one I think that came out on the 26th of October and one that came out after the keynote so to check which one you have just go up to window and go devices and make sure you have the 16B 2657 one. I think the one that came out before was a like a 12B 2555, something like that. Um, so just make sure you have this most recent version. Um, also make sure your Xcode is uh, this 8B 62 build as well. Otherwise you'll get errors because um, the way that you're building it doesn't actually align with the OS that you have, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, if you want, you can go look through all the code. It's, I mean, for developers, it's pretty interesting. But if you're not a developer, it doesn't really matter. Um, so in order to run this, all you need to do is just hit play or build and run in Xcode terms. And that will launch the app wherever it went. There it is. And what this does is it just lets you kind of go through all the different types of uh, touch bar I guess, uh, ways of implementing it. Um, now, you don't see the touch bar right now, but just go back to Xcode and just go to Window, Show Touch Bar. And I'm just going to bring that down the bottom to kind of replicate as close to as I can um, where it'll be located. Um, and then I can just start using different apps. And uh, as you can see, it's giving me stuff for Xcode. Um, you can't really hide Xcode because this is running the simulator through it, so I'm just going to minimize it into my dock. And now I can just start using it uh, as I normally would use it when the uh, MacBook comes out. I'm actually going to minimize that one as well. So um, here's on the right here, you've got your dimness controls. You can scrub that up and down. Uh, here's your volume controls. You can scrub that up and down. Uh, if you expand this, you've got your traditional, like the keys that we were used to for a long time, your up, down, your uh, brightness on your keys and all your uh, volume up and down. You've even got Siri here, however useful you think that is, that's great. Um, so I'm just going to run through a few apps and see what that looks like as far as using the touch bar on that. Uh, so let's go to mail first of all. I'm going to blur a bunch of stuff so you're not seeing my um, private correspondence, but um, here you can actually see when I'm, I've already got a mail message selected, I can uh, reply all, I can create a new one, I can trash it, flag it, all those things. And those standard, uh, the F key kind of functions that we're used to, they're always going to be there over here. Um, and then you can move to different uh, folders. And as I'm scrubbing through, I'm just going to create a new one right here. And then as I'm typing, I can put in like an email address. And it's going to autofill. I had to blur that out. But now when I'm typing, anywhere I type, I can actually change the formatting. Uh, so I can select that. I can bold it, italicize it, underline, change the um, alignment, um, add bullets, things like that, change the text color if I want. Here's this emoji thing that was uh, demoed at the keynote. I don't know how this is really going to affect uh, professional workflows at all, but you've got different categories, stuff like that. So anytime you type, I mean, that's going to be the option that you have. OK, let's try out another app here. I don't want to send that. 
Um, and then we'll go to, let's try out photos. So I went on a trip to Iceland a few years ago, so let's see what this does. Open this up. So I can scrub through my photos here, as you can see. Go through, Oop, that one's out of, let's try that one. Cool, that's a good one. I can rotate it, and I can do some edits on it as well. So basically what you're seeing down the bottom here is exactly the same as what you're seeing actually in the app. It just gives you, I guess, a different way of doing the exact same things you can already do in the apps. Um, so I can crop it, filters, let's see here. I can scrub through the filters. And as I scrub, you can see it on the right-hand side moving through, which is kind of nice update. Let's try that one. If I want to try and look at uh, the original versus the changes I've made, I just tap on that guy, hold it on and off. Uh, if I want to change something else, let's go adjust. Ooh, let's adjust the color, make it black and white. Nice. Let's, don't know what this one is. Oh, that's black and white. Okay, well, it's already black and white, so. It's already changed. Oh, and it's telling me that with this blue little check mark, it's changed. How about darkness? Yeah. Let's brighten that up a little bit. And don't know. Oh, that was the auto enhance. And what other adjustments can we do? Retouch. Yeah, and then I can just go back to navigate. And again, at any time, if I just want to bring out my regular F key functions that I'm used to, I can do that. Let's close that. Cool. So that's photos. Uh, let's try something else. Let's try Safari. Oh, cool. So in here you've got scrollable favorites, and I've got my folders in there as well. Uh, I can close that. Oh, that kind of looks like a URL bar, but it's really not. So this will show my tabs, like if I want to go to the onion, and if I want to add a new tab, let's go to Vimeo. Now I've got both my tabs here, and I can kind of, I'm holding down and like switching back and forth between those, so that would be pretty useful. Google Maps. Yeah, so being able to see the thumbnails is pretty useful as far as what you're looking at, but I mean, you can just look at the name and remember what you're looking at, right? Uh, what else? So that's Safari. There's not much else. I mean, there's a couple of things when you're typing in here. Yeah. I think I was using Chrome, and I went into the uh, search bar, the navigation bar, or whatever, or the URL bar, and it was actually allowing me to bold and underline it, which, so, so obviously this is kind of a buggy version of the Illustrator, or the uh, uh, touch bar here. And, it, and as you can see, when, when there's nothing open, it's just kind of blank. Um, what other apps do we have to play with? Oh, calendar, calendar, here we go. So I've got my calendar open, and I can switch between, or I can scrub between dates. Let's go far ahead in the future. Uh, so when I click on a event there, I can change the time and I can scrub the time if I want to here, change the time. I don't want to do that. No. I can change the location. I can add invites. I can change the calendar. Uh, let's see, done. Can I add new ones? What's this info? Oh, it just gives me the info. It doesn't look like I can create a new uh, calendar event, but I can look at today. So that's pretty useful. Uh, what else we got? Let's close the calendar. <laughs> uh, notes. Yep, same thing. If, I'm, if I've typed some text, I can bold italicize, change the indent, change the text size, whoops, make it a to-do. I can even create new stuff. Okay, oh, here's the uh, autocorrect in action. So bananas are the best way to get a better understanding. So you can type entire non nonsense sentences if you want, it looks like, through this. So that's very much like what you see in iOS. OK, I think that's all the apps that I've tried out. Um, let's see if Word has anything built in yet because Microsoft announced they were updating some stuff, but I don't think they did yet. Yeah, no, I can't even change the, the text that I'm highlighting. So uh, when that is released, most likely it'll have uh, updated things here. 
So that's all I found. I hope that helps. Um, if you want to try that out on your machine, you can definitely do that. Um, and if you have